basically a micro inverter is like a little box that they put behind the solar panels. They put one on each solar panel to basically convert um, DC power, which is what the what the sun generates using the photovoltaic cell, converts it to alternating current, which is what we use at home, and and just passes it along. The thing is, it's not anything super special. Like I get it. It's like a brand new thing when it came out. They have a lot of market share, but at the same time, there are other companies that make micro that make micro inverters. Okay, Whether, okay. Go ahead. Who are they? Yeah. yeah. Huh? Go ahead. Who are they? I don't know. Uh, what are they <laughs> Solar Edge. No, like, I think Solar they, Edge. They, they they don't make Generac, micro inverters. Okay, Generac, never mind. I was just pulling that out my ass. Though. Generac doesn't Generac, make micro inverters. Keep going. Yeah. So there are other companies. They're like Chinese companies that make micro inverters. Well, my point is if you can't even bring up the, the competition, then you have a, a very weak case right off the bat because you have to give at least some actual facts to back up your, your But your, no, that's your what point. I'm saying, that this, this is relatively a new sector, a new thing. So everyone right now is like, oh, my God, this is going to be the next big thing. So right now there's probably a lot of companies just figuring out how to get their supply chains together, manufacture more of these and competition is going to eventually make its way there. And then, like I said, it's going to have to end phase is going to have to figure out what to do right now. I think solar is just like the year 2012. We're in another bubble. Okay. I, I think that everyone in their mother thinks like, solar is oh in a bubble. Yeah, I, I think so. Oh my God. Okay, Chris, Chris, I, I, okay. Yeah. Just, just, just to squash that, I think the piece that you're forgetting here is like you're thinking that Enphase's inverters are like Apple making iPhones, right? Like somebody else can come along and make an iPhone that a bunch of people like. What you're not understanding is that Enphase's customers are not the end user, not the person that buys the solar. Mm. They are the solar installers. They're the companies that install the systems. Now, I worked as a, an alarm installer and security camera installer, and I did, okay? In like five years that I worked there, we never changed companies. Why? Because we know those systems. We know how to install them. We have great rapport with the company. If there's any service, if there's any issue, we can get there and we can troubleshoot. So even if the technology is better, right, better, supposedly, it doesn't fit well with our business model, right? I want to be able to send a guy out and he has one system that he knows. He knows it really well. And if you have great rapport with that company, the cut the end customer that installs the solar will never even know that that product is on the roof so mm -hmm. maybe that piece of information will will change your your mind or at least give you yeah. at least allow that to inform why it is such a moat because if all of the solar installers and Vitaly and i have interviewed several in solar installers mm -hmm. all of them and we and it's we, you know we've crossed continents we talked to the main guy in australia and and several people in the us all of them are like the mm -hmm. consensus is that end phases in um, microinverters are the best. And the reason is because they not only have the best performance, but they also fail the least. Now, every time you got to send somebody to fix a system that costs you money as an installer, even though end phase reimburses you, the point is you want to install it and you never want to see them again. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, before, before Chris answers, there's two things that he could be right about one thing. And we've talked on our mm -hmm. discord back and forth. The stock price is different than the company. Do you agree with that, Chris? Yeah, I do agree with that. I do. So, agree so the stock price right now is shot to the moon, and I'm glad I was a, a participant since twenty dollars. Let me point that out. We've been talking on our channel about this stock since it was twenty bucks. Twenty bucks during the 2020 crash, we said to buy basically, and if you listened, you did well. <laughs> okay, that's all I want to say. You got a but Tesla. The, you got a Tesla. <laughs> if you didn't listen, you didn't get a Tesla. But uh, look, the stock price could be too high. I actually agree with you there that in the short term, uh, absolutely. It can go down in half. Absolutely. But solar is not a fad. Like uh, I think he, he, your, your bear case is that this is just a fad that's going to go away. You don't see that the mm -hmm. next decade is basically all electric vehicles, all solar. Can you, can you respond to something like that? No, I would say that the pricing power of using grid is still going to outcompete solar unless unless that there is all this local support whether it's government subsidies and stuff like that the minute you move those away i don't think you would have nearly the market for it and same thing with the competition from the energy side like right now energy is expensive because of all this russia stuff that's going on but the minute that that stuff gets resolved it's like okay let's go back to using grid power again the other thing is the financing costs of some of these solar installations like I have seen ton of people regret getting solar because the cost of solar ownership is through the roof. The amount of maintenance that you have to do versus just flipping a light switch and getting it through that. The other thing is like, look at Tesla solar. They gave up on that. Why? Like what's, what is the reason for that? 
And no, that's actually, no, no, wait, 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 before you go, that's actually false. They're pausing yeah. them. They're pausing the installs now to take advantage of the, the incentives that kick in at the beginning of the year. So it's not that they've abandoned solar. They're just mm -hmm. pausing it to take advantage of the incentives that take place. Yeah, I, see, so, I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't know so that. I, I want to answer your thing before you continue. Uh, I was trying to look up the statistic and maybe we can look this up because I heard it recently. Even Texas, it's wind and solar deployment is on the is over 20, 25 percent, just wind and solar in Texas. And they hate solar, by the way. Mm -hmm. No one is moving to solar because it's more expensive. That's not what ha what's happening here. What's happening is that gas, oil, those things are becoming more expensive and nuclear, too. Obviously, that's very expensive. So if those things continue to be harder either to get out of the ground, right, because there's a big difference. And there's a guy, Tony Siba, you guys should watch. His, uh, his videos. If nobody's seen it, maybe Amit could put some links to Tony Siba's videos. But basically, the problem is that you need to go dig and find oil. Even if you found a bunch of reserves, you still got to keep mm -hmm. digging for it. The difference with solar is that it's it's manufacturable energy. It means you could make it in a factory now. Anything you can make in a factory, this is a known fact, drops in price over time. So when you talk about solar today, yeah, okay, maybe it is more expensive. And I, I went for it. It's actually not for me. I could go into all the math, but it's not for me. But let's say it is more expensive. Over the next decade, the solar curve is straight down. The EV curve, straight down with batteries. I know you've been paying attention to this. I can't yeah, be talking yeah. to the... So if you've been paying attention to this, and energy in terms of oil and gas, even if they stay level, I mean, it's a no-brainer. What's gonna What's gonna happen? Not 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 if it's gonna happen. What is gonna happen is that solar will take over and dominate. I'm not saying everything. I'm not saying 100. percent I'm not one of those idiots. It's basically going from four percent, three percent currently to let's say 40 percent, 50 percent. That is a massive upside. And right. So what do you got to say to all that? Basically. Well, I would just say once again that there's probably some level of competition that's going to come in the market. If it ends up becoming such a, such a like ubiquitous thing, like right now, Tesla being the market leader where it is, doesn't like a lot of companies are behind, but eventually they're going to catch up in which case they'll be compete, uh, competing against it. Now, Enphase can be one of these entrenched companies that has such a monopolistic hold over the entire industry that they'll be able to kind of maintain that dominance. But you but guys just said, you just guys just said before, like, I think right now, what is the warranty on the thing? 25 years warranty on, on a micro inverter from Enphase, yeah. right? That is a huge life cycle cost that like that you're not going to have repeat customers, at least with cars, like every five, maybe even seven years, you're going to switch up a car with a micro inverter, you know, with every if everything works well, it's 25 years of, uh, of that. Not to mention not all the sites that people are going to utilize are are, um, I, I think you're wrong. Solar generation. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, respond. Go ahead. You want to respond? Well, to that? okay. I think in the same way that the uh, you know the pandemic showed us certain vulnerabilities as a nation. I think it's clear now with this whole Russia thing that having energy independence is actually a matter of national security at this point, right? So not being dependent on foreign providers of 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 energy for a country is actually super important. So that's why you're seeing a lot of these subsidies switch over, right? And, and also, if you have everybody has their own solar panels, you don't have a single point of failure in your grid, right? So that's also because that happens. I mean, people hack the, the, the grid and try to take take out the power. So I just I think that you're, you're looking at it as a bunch of people putting solar panels on their roof. But energy mm -hmm. is it actually touches has a lot of touch points. The other thing I'll say is you're like, oh, somebody can come along and make a better one. Sure. You know, and some people argue that like the Google Pixel is a better phone, right? But once you have that penetration, it becomes really hard, even with the superior product, to get people to switch over. Because Apple didn't just make a phone. They find ways of monetizing the people once they're in there. you know. And so just in the, like Vitaly was saying, what happens when 10% of all cars are EVs? You need charging stations. You need charging infrastructure, right? What happens in a place like Texas when you have power, massive power outages? You need backup. You need backup batteries. So this idea that they're only selling inverters that they don't need, that there's no more upsell, you know, it, yeah. that's how that's how it, it's not. You're looking at a small piece of it. You got to think the big well, picture of it. Carlos, let me respond to his thing saying that, oh, as soon as you sell the inverter, you're done. First of all, even me and Carlos at this point, when we got our systems, we didn't have as many EVs in the house. Yeah, I didn't transition my house to all electric heat. I put in a heat pump recently. Yeah. So now I'm back on the grid in terms of using some of that energy, and I don't want to be. So now I got to go back to Enphase, get more panels, or get new inverters that now handle higher power output, right. basically. 
So there is a cycle there too. Maybe it's not the same as an iPhone cycle, obviously, but there is a cycle. And we're not talking about the battery business that they're doing. They're going to be yeah. selling energy. I think me and you talked about that briefly online. So there's a lot of things that's go that are going on besides these inverters. So I think mm -hmm. you have to look at the holistic picture. And it looks like you're looking at yeah. very narrow field of view I, here. I definitely will do more research on it. Um, and I do I do like seeing that they're actually diversifying into other parts of the of the solar um, solar market where they're also doing monitoring stuff and then on top of it battery storage. So that is charging. Stuff I like. Yeah, EV I do charging. like yeah EV charge. I do like all that. But I am, I'm still not 100% behind it. And one last question, and then we could probably move on to something else. Why are insiders selling at such a breakneck pace? Once again, the stock price is different yeah. than the actual fundamentals of the company. If the stock right. gets too high, even I want to sell. Mm -hmm. And I have sold, mm -hmm. by the way, at 300 bucks. If you've been following us on Discord, I have sold. And I've told people that, hey, if you need some money, you should take profits yeah. right now. It's okay. It's not going to kill you if you don't have all your shares. That's okay, too. You know, 